Hey guys, welcome back to Flat Creek Outdoors. Today is a gorgeous day here in Central Virginia. Temperatures are in the 40s. It's a little bit breezy, but it's like perfect outdoor working conditions if you ask me. This is like the perfect temperature to not break a sweat too bad out here and get a lot of work done. This is kind of our last chance to take down some trees before the buds break. So uh, the trees, especially the maples, are all uh, popping out their little red buds right now and they'll be leafing out here in the next week or two. So I want to get a few more trees down to add to my pile for firewood inventory and I think that's kind of the, the key is getting the, the trees down before they really draw up extra moisture to produce their leaves. Yeah, at least that's what I've heard from some other people if we want to get it seasoned for this next upcoming winter. So that's what I'm going to try to do today. I've got a few trees along this tree line that I've identified that I want to take down. A couple uh, it's actually all kind of mixed species in here. So I've got a couple oaks that I want to take down, one or two poplars, maybe a pine or two that we'll use for fire pit wood. We'll just have to kind of see what things look like once we get into it. So follow along. It's going to be a fun one. And stick around till the very end. I've got a major purchase that we made for the farm that I want to share with you guys. So uh, it's just something that uh, you'll see working around the farm here in upcoming videos. And I want to just let you guys know that we got something new. So stick around. First up, I got this oak with that little funky shape to it right there. So that should fall pretty easily, pretty quick. We'll knock that out. size of this tree man that's a monster right there I'm gonna leave that one not gonna take that one down but there's this gum growing up right next to it so I'm gonna knock that down just to make sure this tree has plenty of room to breathe there's a holly tree next to it I'm gonna take it down over here I've got another really tall gumball tree over here I got three trees in a row we got a really big gumball tree uh, that's not Great firewood, but I'll put that in my seconds pile or we'll burn it in our own fire pit. Then I've got a poplar, kind of same story there. And then I've got a uh, red maple over there that we'll take down and uh, probably knock down all these smaller, scrubbier trees here too. If you're new to the channel, you, maybe you haven't heard this before, but we've when we bought this property two years ago, well, there's a lot of encroachment on the field and we've just been slowly chipping away at some of this encroachment and we're trying to reclaim some of this open field space for future planting. So that's all I'm really working on here is taking down smaller, less desirable trees along the field edge. Much of it um, especially the smallest scrubbiest stuff in this section we've already taken down but if you see up there by my truck there's still a lot of pine up there that's what this section used to look like All right, those were pretty easy, straightforward. I will clean those up in a little while. The third tree along this section I wanted to take down was this maple. At the trunk, it's considerably bigger than these other two trees, but it splits right there. And then we can see what it looks like up there. It should still fall out towards the field. Uh, I've got my wedges with me if I need to. If it falls on the smaller stuff over here, I don't care, that's uh, three gum trees. There's two white oaks right here that if we can salvage those, if I can get it to fall without breaking those, that would be awesome. And then in another five, six years, those would make some great firewood trees. So we'll just let them ride there for a little while. Now this tree is showing some rot on this side. Uh, so I'm going to cut it a little bit higher than I usually would just to try to make sure I'm up in the solid stuff.
see the top of that left stab snapped back and it was only a few feet away from me so you just never know with these multi-stem trees but all good you can see the ants were really working their magic up inside that one but that went right where I wanted it to and saved those white oaks right there I'll chop down those couple gum that are there and give those white oaks some room to breathe. Next up, I'm going to head back across the property now to the parking area. Stacy's over there in the tractor pushing a bunch of wood chips. Maybe you saw in the last video I showed we have a bunch of wood chips that have been dropped off from tree companies here in recent weeks. So she's trying to get all that stuff up in one neat pile. But there's a huge maple that's got to be 22, 23 inches around at the base. And there's also evidence that it once had some fencing growing up through it. But it's leaning out over the mulch pile and I want to take it down. So we'll go work on that next if she's done up there. Let's go take a look. There she is. Well, you can see there's a lot more chips to move here. We got so many wood chips with uh, in the past couple of weeks because of the ice storms that we got. These tree companies have been really busy. So all of this stuff that's along here needs to get pushed over there. And we kind of use that as a barrier along the edge of the driveway there. And when we have events and stuff, people uh, park there too. That's a row of parking. Um, but that's where we leave the chips to sit and compost and then we pluck from there when we want to use them around the property. I'm going to do another video in a week or two that shows all the different ways that we use those wood chips. We use them all over the place and they have served us really well. This whole parking area here, all this is parking. Uh, most of this has been covered in wood chips as well. Uh, we did a little bit of gravel stuff back there and then I realized how much gravel costs and I was like, we got to find a better solution and wood chips is that solution that costs us nothing costs us just a little bit of our time to spread them around and it's working out pretty well for us. All the wood chips are pushed off to the side now for the most part. There's a little bit over there still, but I've got some other branches and small logs and stuff that I have to move out of the way before we can get that. But we can get vehicles through here now, that's what we need. And now I'm going to work on this maple that is leaning up over the wood pile. This is the one I mentioned before, it had some fencing in it. So I'm trying to look at it and figure out, should I try to go above? where I think any metal would be. And there's some scarring here, maybe a little bit there. So that fencing could be in this tree, you know, around those parts. I think I'm gonna try to just go all the way down to the ground and try to cut under the, where the fencing was. So I'm doing a bore cut just to make sure that this doesn't 
barber chair on me, or at least to minimize the chances. But I just realized there's one safety thing that I should be doing. We share a driveway with a residence that's over here, so I should have somebody spotting the fall of this tree and make sure that nobody tries to drive in or out while I'm cutting. So I'm gonna go get Stacy to, to do that real quick, and then I'll come back and finish this up. tree was a little bit more than my little tractor wanted to pull so the tree dug in and I didn't have the leverage to pick it up and try to pull it out so we'll just cut it off cut it off here and we'll be good to go <laughs> Okay, that was fun. There were three big branches that were like up and over the mulch pile. So it really had that tree anchored in there. Just the tractor couldn't pull it. There wasn't enough traction. I dug some big old ruts over here. I even tried the differential lock for extra traction. I know the camera wasn't pointing that way, but uh, anyway, point being, I did everything that the tractor could do. I even tried to jerk it and um, it, it still didn't work. So I just had to go cut the top out. All of this is going to be future firewood that I will have to, you know, buck up, split, stack, and I'll save that for a future video for you guys. Well, I mentioned at the beginning of the video that I had a major purchase that I wanted to share with you guys, and it is right here. Look at that. I got myself a new utility trailer. That is a 6x12 with 2 foot high mesh sides, and we'll find lots of uses for this both on the farm and then outside of here as well. Moving equipment around when I need to move my mower or my four-wheeler or whatever. I can drive it right up on this. It is a big improvement, or I'm sure it will be a big improvement over what we used to have, which is right next to it. And that is a little five by eight uh, tilt trailer. And that's what we used to haul the mower or the four wheeler. Couldn't get both in there at the same time. So uh, anyway, that will continue to use around the farm. I actually used it a bunch today, though I didn't film it to share it with you guys but hauling a bunch of limbs and other debris out to our burn pile. It's great just to load that thing up, race across the property, dump it out, and, uh, and head on back. So anyway, that's been great, but it's time for an upgrade. This particular trailer is from the 
Curahy Trailers Company. See there, I believe they're out of Georgia. And it appears to be pretty well built. I looked at a couple other trailers on the market. And as far as you know, the quality of the welds, and you can see there like where that angle iron side meets the side rail and where the stake pocket meets the side rail. The quality of the welds, the quality of the paint, and all that kind of stuff look pretty good on this one compared to some of the others that I've seen. This has kind of been on my purchase list for a while now and I had a repeat customer, repeat firewood customer, say they wanted to stock up for next season and they wanted to do kind of a double size order. So this is equivalent to two full truckloads of my little truck and that's about 75 cubic feet uh, or roughly two thirds of a uh, of a cord. So that's what they're getting, that's what fits in there and I think that about maxes this trailer out in terms of weight especially with unseasoned wood, which is which is a little heavier. So this stuff here is all stuff that I've been cutting on for the past few months. And uh, you, you see, there's still room in the trailer. I could theoretically fit more, but I think as far as the weight capacity goes, this is probably about it. Well, thanks for following along today, guys. We got a bunch of trees down, a bunch of potential firewood laying down now in the field that we'll need to go back and delim and buck up and haul up here and split and stack. So that'll be on a future video. Thanks for following along. I will see you on the next one. Bye-bye.